Welcome to the next video in this Tabletop Simulator UI Overview Series. I'm Kimika with Berserk Games and I'm going to show you everything related to the Contextual Menu. The Contextual Menu is the menu that pops up when you right-click on an object. Depending on the object, you can get a different set of options in the menu. The Contextual Menu will work on all selected objects. This video will go over the basic commands that you will find in the contextual menu for all objects. In future videos, we will cover the other object-specific contextual menu options. Toggles are what you can set on each object. You have seven options to choose from. Lock, Grid, Snap, Auto Raise, Tooltip, Sticky, and Persistent. Hovering over each option will give you basic information in the tooltip. These toggles are useful when you want to remove or add certain toggles to just one object, but keep them on for the rest. The lock toggle lets you lock or unlock an object. When the box is checked, the object is locked. The shortcut for locking an object is just hovering over it and pressing the L key. The grid toggle is on by default, which allows an object to snap to the grid. The grid is a universal snapping system, which allows you to snap objects into place with set size and spacing. You can check out all the grid options in the top menu under Host and Grid. Snap points are similar to the grid, but can be placed anywhere in the scene using the Points tool. The chessboard has snap points in each space, so as you can see, the object snaps into the center of each space. If I no longer want it to snap, I just untoggle it in the menu and now my piece can move without snapping. Auto raise is also on by default and it automatically raises pieces you are holding above other objects to avoid collision. No matter how fast you try to move the piece over and around other objects, they won't collide. If you need the collision to happen in your games, then just untoggle the auto raise and it will no longer rise above other objects. You will have to manually do it by pressing R. The tooltip can now be toggled on or off if you don't want it to show up on a specific object. This is good for certain objects that need to be hidden in games, but the other objects still need to be named publicly. The sticky toggle is great because you don't have to wonder why you can't get something to stack together like chips and cards. In some games, you need to place a token on a card and move that card around with the tokens on them. Thanks to the sticky toggle, you can do just that. If you don't want pieces to stick on top of another, just make sure the bottom object has the sticky toggle unchecked and it will no longer hold objects that are on top of it when lifted. The final toggle is persistent. What this means is that you can mark an object as persistent and it will continue to stay on your table no matter what game you change it to. This is good for those who want to keep listening to music on the MP3 player or watch videos on the tablet or anything that you need to have continue between games. The next option in the basic menu is save to chest. Everything that you have on your table, you can save for future use. You can save individual objects or save multiple objects all at once to your chest. Just click Save to Chest in your contextual menu and name it what you want. You can either save it to one of your folders in your chest or just save it as is. To create folders, you need to do it in the chest under the Saved Objects folder. Color Tint allows you to tint objects a wide variety of colors. This is a quick and easy way to create different game pieces with the same basic shape. The Physics button brings up a separate menu with all kinds of options to play around with. In the Rigid Body tab, you can choose whether you want the object to use gravity or not, and you can modify the amounts for the mass, drag, and angular drag of the object. Hover over each option to bring up the tooltip for more info. In the Materials tab, you can set the amounts for the static friction, when the object is lying still, dynamic friction, for when the object is already moving, and the bounciness of the object. The next section are actions you can do with an object like Flip, Rotate, and Scale. You can use a contextual menu for these actions, or use the hotkeys F for Flip, Q and E for Rotate, or scrolling with the middle mouse button when holding an object, and the plus or minus keys for scaling up and down. The scripting option is an advanced feature and can be used to bring up the scripting window to add in scripts to a particular object. You can read more about scripting in our knowledge base. The link is in the description below. You can quickly duplicate or delete objects by clicking on the copy button and then right clicking on the table to paste. Keep in mind that you need to right click on a non-object in order for the paste to work. If you prefer to use hotkeys, you can use Ctrl C to copy, Ctrl V to paste, and Ctrl X to cut or delete the object. The final thing in the basic contextual menu is the name and description. You can name all objects here and when you hover over those objects, you will see the name in the tooltip. 
If you want to add more info about this object, then you can add a description. When you hover over the object and stay hovered, the description will pop up after a couple of seconds. If you want to name objects but don't want them to show up so quickly, then you can use a description to name your object since there is a delay before the tooltip pops up. Naming objects is great because when you use the search feature on bags and decks, the objects are clearly named and easy to find. If you don't name them, they will just show up as numbers in chronological order. Named objects automatically show up as tooltips, but if you don't want the tooltips to be shown, you can now disable them per object in the toggles, as mentioned previously. And lastly, I'd like to go over the global contextual menu. Right-click anywhere that doesn't have an object, like the basic tables, and you will get a global contextual menu. This gives you a new option to save and load camera views. Move your camera where you want it to go, then click on Save Camera and choose a number. Press the spacebar to go back to your normal view. Now choose Load Camera and the number you chose previously. Your camera view will now move to the one you had saved. You can also use a hotkey, Alt plus the number to load, and Control plus the number to save. You can save up to 9 views. You can also change your camera mode here from 3rd to 1st person view, or you can easily use the hotkey P to switch between them. You can also access the blindfold in the global contextual menu. Just click it to turn it on, or you can use the B hotkey. And that covers the basics of the contextual menu in this series. While there are still other parts of the contextual menu, we will be going over those in more detail when we create other videos that will go over specific areas of Tabletop Simulator. We'll also be making some fun videos like how to create a custom game from start to finish. Thanks for watching and see you next time!